I'm going to do a quick tutorial on Task Manager in Windows 11. And we can easily get there by clicking on the search bar and just typing in Task Manager. So you can no longer just right click and get it on the taskbar like you used to. So here is Task Manager. So it's showing us the CPU, memory, disk, and network percentage that's currently being used. Now if you want, you can sort by whichever is using the most. So if I click on CPU, I can see which application is using the most of that particular resource. Same thing with memory, etc. There's also some hidden columns we can add in simply by right clicking anywhere on status and checking the box for anything that's not currently checked or you could uncheck as well. So I'm going to choose the process ID or PID and that's because the process ID actually links to some other things that I'm going to show you in a little bit. So there's the number that's associated with this particular application. Now I'm going to click on performance and inside performance we have CPU, memory, disk, and Ethernet. And if you have a wireless card you'll see a wireless uh, network card as well. So if I click on Ethernet for instance we can see the inbound and outbound traffic. Uh, so that's why you see two different lines. One is for inbound and one is for outbound. Then under disk we can see disk activity. Not much going on there so that's a good sign. A lot of times the disk can be the bottleneck if you don't have a solid state drive. Then memory, you could definitely run out of memory if you have too many applications open or just don't have enough. We can see I have 16 gigabytes here and only 19% currently in use. Then we have under CPU, we have basically this is the uh, central processing unit uh, or the uh, processor and you can see it's only at 5% utilization. Another interesting thing that I like to look at is uptime. So if you can't tell, hey, did my computer crash recently? How long has it been up and running? So you can see right here, mine's been up for five hours, and that's about how long ago I installed Windows 11 on this computer. We can also see processes, threads, and handles, as well as the speed. So the speed is running at 2.2 gigahertz, and we can see we have one uh, CPU socket, but we have four processors on that socket. And another thing of interest you should take a look at is you also have the option to open the resource monitor from here. So if I click on that, it opens up a whole new application, and that gives us more granularity to what's happening with all our different processes. So for instance, with the CPU, it, it showed me in Task Manager the overall what's being used. But I can go specifically to certain processes and see how much CPU time those processes are using. And the same thing with disk and memory, etc. Now take a look once again, we see Process ID. And the Process ID here matches the Process ID that you see in our processes tab over here. So these are all linked together and this will all make sense in a little bit. Now, now I click on app history we can see all the different applications that have been opened and if they're using any CPU time, network information, etc. So there's all the app history. Obviously did not open anything exciting. Uh, now we'll go to startup. Now startup what that does is it can really save you a lot of uh, RAM if you go in here and you turn things off that shouldn't be starting up with your computer because this is what's called terminate and stay resident so TSR in other words and what will happen is anything that's automatically set to start with the computer will start up even if you don't launch it so for instance if I go to Cortana and I choose enable then we can see when the computer starts up then this particular application is going to open up. Now the reason for TSRs are so if you do launch a particular application it will launch much much faster if it launches and sits in the background waiting for you to click on it. But it just ends up eating up a lot of RAM so you don't always want to have that happen. So I can disable that, I can disable that and now next time I restart I'll have a lot more uh, RAM available to me because it's not just sitting in the background. Now you shouldn't disable everything here. So for instance, if you use a mouse trackpad and you disable that, well, guess what? Your mouse isn't going to work. So be really careful on what it is you choose to disable and uh, go back in and re-enable anything that you may need to later on. Users shows who's logged into the computer. So it's showing a little picture of me because I'm logged in with a Microsoft account and you can see all the different 
applications that I'm currently running. Now, a lot of these applications are just uh, background applications that run with Windows. They're not things that I actually opened myself, but it does show everything it's using, memory-wise, CPU, etc. Now, I use this a lot on servers to see if anybody's been logged in or logged in uh, and maybe say disconnected or currently logged in to a server and uh, to see if anybody's on that maybe shouldn't be on. But in a Windows computer uh, that's a client such as Windows 11, only one person's allowed to log in at a time anyway, so you wouldn't see that information. Now I go to details and it shows me all these executables that are running uh, along with my processes that we talked about earlier. There's the process ID again right there. So once again, we're seeing that process ID show up. So basically anytime a, an executable, and you see all these executables running, anytime an executable starts up, then it automatically assigns a process ID to it. It's just a random number. It's not any particular number that is always set. So it's going to be different every time. And if we go to services, then we can see all the different services that are running as well. So we can see the status of the services. I'll just move those over here. We can see the status, either stopped or started. I'm going to click on status here. We can see now they're running is the status. If I click on it, then it's stopped. So why this is so important, these process IDs, are because sometimes you get a service that gets stuck. You're trying to stop that service, and it's, it shows a status of stopping instead of stopped. Or you're trying to start a service, and it's, it's uh, set as a status of starting instead of running. And uh, what can happen is, is it can just hold up your entire computer. So what you can do is you can use these process IDs to find out how they're tied together. So for instance, if I go to App Info here, my process ID is 6336. If I go to Details, and sort by process ID, I can see which one is 6336, which executable is tied to that. So here it is, right here, it's this service host. And in this case, it's just a host that runs with Windows. So I can go in and I can right click and end the task and it'll unstick that particular service that is stuck either starting or stopping. It'll keep you from having to restart the entire computer, which can be really helpful. You can also right click and click on uh, go to details. And what it'll do is it'll just take you right to that process ID. So you don't even have to hunt for it. And if I go to processes, the first tab we looked at, and I right click, I can choose go to details right here. And once again, it takes me to the executable, which is right up here. It takes me to the executable so I can then end that executable in case that particular task is stuck. Because a lot of times you'll have to go into processes and you'll have to right click on a process and end that task uh, because it may not close properly without it. So now you'll know the executable file, you'll know the service if there is one, and you'll know the name of the application all tied up because of this process ID number synchronizes between them. So there's your task manager tutorial in Microsoft Windows 11.